So, fun bit of trivia for you. I'm leaving. Leaving this city. Travelling across the country, probably by train. Not before the end of January, but... Time to say goodbye. And that means getting rid of a lot of stuff. And I have a serious problem in that I keep going into Oxfam and buying books. But I do want to read them. So which order am I going to read these books in? Well, I saw this thing, this video, link in the card. Ranking books based on their first line. So I thought, hey, why not base what order I'm going to read these in based on their first line? Ooh, I'm a film journalist now. That's, uh, that's something. Well, only for the student newspaper, but I get two whole pages to myself. I'm thinking of reviewing Fanny by Gaslight, which is a film from the 40s. I'm thinking for the headline. Fancy a good time. Try a bit of Fanny by Gaslight. So first up, there is The Kindness of Women by the master of literary trauma, J.G. Ballard. This is a compendium edition with Empire of the Sun, which I've almost finished reading. And the first one's sort of about... It's sort of a semi-autobiographical tale of Ballard's own internment in a uh, Japanese uh, internment camp during the war. It's really... It's visceral. It's... No wonder J.G. Ballard wrote some fucked up stuff. Every afternoon in Shanghai during the summer of 1937, I rode down to the Bund to see if the war had begun. Okay. 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 The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This is a really popular one, I believe. Uh, it looks very interesting. Oh lord, it's not praising itself on the first page, is it? Ugh, never trust a book that praises itself on the first page. At least wait till the third chapter. Yes, by the way. Yes. In some cases, yes. 19 years before she decided to die. Nora Seed sat in the warmth of the small library at Hazeldean School in the town of Bedford. The Children of the New Forest by Captain Marriott. This is set in the English Civil War. And I've wanted to read this since seeing a version of it on the telly as a child. And I finally uh, found a copy in Oxfam. The only bookshop we've got left in the city, now that W.H. Smith has decided to stop selling proper books. Well, they still sell books, but... Ooh, what the hell are you? Get away, bug. Get away. Bug off. The circumstances which I am about to relate to my juvenile readers took place in the year 1647. That's slightly worse than uh, Kindness of Women, isn't it? Not going to be reading that one for a while. Daphne du Maurier, my cousin Thrackle. I really hate that cover. That cover is. This was actually a free one I found in the uh, book bin in Morrison's. It used to belong to someone called Calf, apparently. They used to hang men at four turnings in the old days. So far, these aren't very good opening lines, are they? I should read better books. Another Daphne du Maurier, Frenchman's Creek. Uh, I got this one from um, W.H. Smith, actually, because they were flogging all their books dead cheap. Because they no longer sell any books. When the east wind blows up Helford River, the shining waters become troubled and disturbed, and the little waves beat angrily upon the sandy shores. Well, Ms. Du Maurier, it is better than my cousin Rackle. Next up, um, 
a sort of memoir autobiography, uh, Step by Step by Simon Reeve. I read um, Tropic of Capricorn by Simon Reeve not so long ago and really, really loved it. I'm hoping this is, like, as good. Everything felt wrong. Short, sweet, top of the pile. This is another one I got from W.H. Smith. Stephen King, 112263, about um, changing history, about the JFK assassination. I really either wanted the first Dark Tower book or it, but they didn't have them. They'd um, gone, unfortunately. I have never been what you'd call a crying man. Next up we have another one I am currently reading. Uh, this is another omnibus edition, uh, Hornblower by C.S. Forrester. I've read the second of these and I'm one chapter away from finishing the first. These are about um, the career of a uh, a naval seaman, hornblower, during the Napoleonic Wars. And they go from like the 1790s right up to about 1820. He starts off as a, a midshipman and ends up as Rear Admiral of the Fleet, eventually. Repeat after me, said the parson. Okay, Hornblower, C.S. Forrester, I love you, but that is utter, utter fecking shite. Non-fiction book now, Peter A. Croyd, London Under which looks really, really fascinating. It's about, like, the London underworld, not just the underground, but all the stuff that's, like, buried under London, all the secrets, all the bits and pieces that have been left over from 2,000 years of history. And it looks really fascinating. Tread carefully over the pavements of London, for you are treading on skin, a skein of stone that covers rivers and labyrinths, Tunnels and chambers, streams and caverns, pipes and cables, springs and passages, crypts and sewers, creeping things that will never see the light of day. That's the best yet, isn't it? Straight to the top. Um, okay, um, I can't read this one next because um, I'm only up to uh, the fourth book and I can't find it anywhere. This is uh, Diana Gabaldon, A Breath of Snow and Ashes, but I've got two more books to read before I um, get to this one, and I can't find the, um, the fourth book anywhere. No one had known the cabin was there until Kenny Lindsay had seen the flames on his way up the creek. It's not the worst opening line we've had, let's put it that way. As to who Kenny Lindsay is, I don't know, he's not been introduced in the first three books, so... The Plague Dogs by Richard Adams. This is the guy who wrote Watership Down. I've tried to read Watership Down in the past, but... I don't know, I've never, never finished it. So... This was like 25p in a junk shop, so, I mean, it's supposed to be really disturbing, which definitely right up my street. Once belonged to Lorenz. Junk shops and charity shops, by the way. Great place for getting cheap books and stuff like that you might not find in normal bookshops, like, I don't know, Waterstones. The water in the metal tank slopped sideways, and a treacly ripple ran along the edge, reached the corner, and died away. Hmm. Third, I think that one. George Eliot, Silas Marner. In the days when the spinning wheels hummed busily in the farmhouses, 
and even great ladies, clothed in silk and thread lace, had their toy spinning wheels of polished oak. There might be seen in the districts far away among the lanes, or deep in the bosom of the hills, certain pallid, undersized men. I feel she's judging me here, who, by the side of the brawny country folk, looked like the remnants of a disinherited... She's judging me, isn't she? Beside which, far too long for an opening line, Miss Elliot. You can go on the bottom. I think. In fact, no, you're slightly better than Hornblower. I forgot I had a coffee, you're going to fall. Heroes of Olympus, book three. My second uh, reading vlog of this series should be out. If not already, it might be my next video. It's edited, but I've just not had time, the willpower, the energy to just continue with the series. So, until she met the exploding statue, Annabeth thought she was prepared for anything. I'm intrigued by the exploding statue. Number... Oh, which is better, which is better, which is better? On the one hand, we've got secrets. On the other, exploding statues. Trouble is, I read this. Gotta do the reading block. Second. Next up, I've got Point Blank by Anthony Horowitz. Or it's in the Alps, isn't it? So should it be Point Blanc? That's terrible French, James. This is the second of the Alex Rider books. High in the Alps, death waits for Alex Rider. No, it doesn't. He's a teenager. He's not going to die. Besides which, there are more books. And a dedication, dear Billy, love from Auntie Kirsty. Billy, somebody gave you this as a present and you're getting rid of it. They even signed it, dedicated it to you, and... <sighs> Michael J. Roscoe was a careful man. I think I preferred the uh, Hornblower opening to um, the opening to this, so... Um, didn't much enjoy the first one anyway, so... Uh, I bought them both together. So, um, that's going on the bottom. Hoo -hoo. Graham Green. The heart of the matter. Ooh, I am reading a Graham Green at the minute. I'm reading one of his um, suppressed books. So do I want to read this at the same time? Oh, I'm also reading um, his travel book about Mexico as well, so... Eh, it might be a bit much... Unless the opening line is, you know, like, a killer. And it's grey and green, so... It could be. Wilson sat on the balcony of the Bedford Hotel, with his bald pink knees thrust against the ironwork. No, it's not a good opening line. Between the Woods and the Water by Patrick Lee Fermor. This is the second part of a trilogy about Lee Fermor's journey across Europe in 1933-34. He went to Constantinople, Istanbul, on foot. Uh, the first one, I've not quite finished it yet. I struggled to get through it the first time. Um, not sure if I want to go straight onto this one or not. Perhaps I had made too long a halt on the bridge. It's better than Children of the New Forest though, I think. Yeah, that can go above Children of the New Forest. I do love a bit of um, Agatha Christie. This is Dumb Witness. Uh, one involving a dog, which I've seen bits of the television adaptation of this, but never read the book, so 
Miss Arundel died on May 1st. Bottom. Okay, last four books. Rapid Fire. Rob Roy, Sir Walter Scott. Who is really difficult to get hold of these days. Especially in, you know, like, mainstream bookshops like... Oh, I don't know. Uh, Waterstones. You have requested me, my dear friend, to bestow some of that leisure with which Providence has blessed the decline of my life in registering the hazards and difficulties which attended its commencement. Don't know about you, but I'm not infused. The Ask and the Answer by Patrick Ness. Again, second in a series. I read the first one last year when I was uh, doing some market research for Redbird. Wasn't that useful. It's alright, but your nose reveals you, Todd Hewitt. Oh, sorry, your noise reveals you, Todd Hewitt. Not as good as the exploding statue or the trouble, but better than the plague dogs, I think. So, fourth. Snuff by the king of fantasy himself, Terry Pratchett. The goblin experience of the world is the cult, or perhaps religion, of Angaway. I want to know more. So I'm going to put this one... I think I'm going to put this one third, actually, because I want to know more about that. And finally, we have Quest for the Lost World by Brian Blessed, who is, um, surprisingly, in Welsh mythology. That's a joke that will go over everybody's head. This book is about fulfilling a childhood dream. It doesn't hook me, I'm afraid. I'm interested, but it doesn't doesn't quite thrill me. But saying that, I think that is better than Stephen King. Slightly. Slightly more interested. So I think this can go... 7th? I think. So there we go. The next three books I will be reading are Peter Ackroyd, London Under, Heroes of Olympus, The Mark of Athena, which means I'm going to have to do the reading vlog. And Snuff by Terry Pratchett. So, look out for reviews of those coming. Well, I've got a backlog, so they'll be a while, I'm afraid. But anyway, you can click the card to check out more reviews of mine, more book videos, and special thanks to Mr. Jack Edwards for providing the inspiration for this video in the first place, and I will get finishing the books I'm currently reading so I can start on these. Catch you later.